Our first guest tonight is an Oscar-nominated writer and Emmy-nominated actor. He plays the real-life founder of the most famous strip club in the world in Welcome to Chippendales. It comes out on Tuesday. Please welcome Kumail Nanjiani. <laughs> What a wonderful crowd. Well, everybody loves you, me included. And oh, I gotta yeah. tell you something, I was, um, oh, I remember kind. reading about you being in this Chippendale show on Hulu, and yeah. um, I assumed, because you're of your physique, that you would be one of the dancers. No. You're not one of the dancers. What a gift. I'm the only one who doesn't take his shirt off the entire time. <laughs> Uh, they all, all had to watch what I what they ate, and I ate cheesecake the entire time. Did you really? I did. Because you actually had to get out of shape for the movie, right? Well, so this guy, you know, I mean, he can't look like someone who could get on stage and dance with them. And for a little point in my life, I did <laughs> look yeah. like I could. You still do. Uh, thank you, thank yeah. you. And so I was like, I want to like change how I look. So I was eating four huge meals a day. I was eating. Fried chicken. I would get home at night and order a fried chicken sandwich with fries, eat it, and go right to bed. You say, you say <laughs> it was you glorious. Say, you say that. Oh, I remember those days. Oh my God, I'm getting excited thinking about it. You say that them. like I don't do that now. <laughs> I did it so much, Jimmy. I started like having trouble uh, breathing in the middle of the night. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, no. Was the chicken still in your mouth? Yeah, I think that's what it was. <laughs> That's what you do with bedtime chicken, right? <laughs> yeah. You put it in your mouth, you go to bed. You let it dissolve you, yeah, throughout you, the evening, yeah. That's right. <laughs> you chew in your dream. <laughs> but I would woke up, wake up in the middle of the night like gasping for breath. Like I would wake up like, <gasps> oh, that's like a not... woman who just moved into a creaky old house in a horror movie, you know? <laughs> I'd see like a little kid run out of the room. Who's that? <laughs> dead for 20 years. <laughs> and uh, so I did like a sleep study and they said uh, I have sleep apnea. Because of the weight gain? Because of the weight gain, and they said I stopped breathing 15 times an hour. Oh, wow. That is so many times an hour to not be breathing. <laughs> I don't know if you know, Jimmy, you're not a doctor. No, breathing, no. very important. It is one of the top most important things you can do, right? Breathing, yeah. heart beating, and sex. That's it. <laughs> Water also, I think, maybe even above sex, but go on. What go is? On. Water. Water. Oh, yes, you That's have to have water. That's what's been missing. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you. You can't get your... <laughs> you can only get so much hydration from but... cheesecake. So what so, did you do? So they gave me this machine. It's called a CPAP machine. Oh, yeah, I know you, that. Have you ever used yeah, it? Yeah, I have, yeah. So I put you put it on your face, and it like sort of forces you to keep breathing so you know you don't die in your sleep. And I used that for months, and one day I had it on, and I just happened to look in the mirror, and I was like, I turned to my wife, I was like, I don't know how you'll ever be attracted to me again. I had the same thing, yeah. And, and she said, I love you, and not, I'm attracted to you. <laughs> <laughs> and we've, we haven't had sex since. <laughs> Yeah, the seat, that's an, because it like goes in your mouth. It's not just like, like uh, if you're a pilot in Star Wars where it's over your face, it goes into the face. No. It's a terrible invention. It's not like being a pilot in Star Wars. No. That's right. She it, was like, yeah, so you did wear it. I did it, I did, and I, I honestly, and this is not a joke of any kind, the doctor said, if you wear this, you know, it will extend your life by, probably by like three years. And I said, you know what? After wearing it for a month, I said, I'm okay dying three years early. Uh, what's gonna, I mean, what's gonna be so great at that age anyway? Right. Uh, I am not going to sleep like this because it looks like you're in, you know, intensive care. It right, because you lose three years from the end of your life. That's like the worst time anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Take that. It's not like you lost from one to three. <laughs> no. No. Those were great years. So you, you yeah. did that for the I, whole time, huh? Yeah, for the whole shoot I did that, but then I, you know, stopped eating like that and I don't need the machine anymore. Um, and, well, that's and, good. You know, that's good. People would be like, do you like use that machine and like role play? I'm like, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> what would the role play be? Like, hey, you're like a really bad worker at a retirement home. <laughs> You're like an evil nurse, and I'm, you know, it's my last week, and I want to live. I'm about to die of emphysema. I'm about to die of emphysema, so I have one wish. So then, and I also was wondering, because I know you worked so hard to become a Marvel superhero, to get in that shape, does it feel, is it, does it feel terrible or good to just, just go crazy and start eating like that and head in that other direction? It really felt great for a while. It mm -hmm. was when the, uh, you know, when I stopped breathing in the middle of That's the night. That's when it, yeah, <laughs> the breathing is when... That cut down my enjoyment <laughs> by at least 50%. <laughs> but you're okay now, and you look like you've gotten back into shape. Yeah, I've yep. gotten back okay, but you know, when I was shooting the show, that wasn't the only thing that happened. Like, on the first day of shooting the show, it was an eating scene, and I ended up, like, breaking a tooth on camera. <laughs> Boy. Is that funny? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> well, you are a, chi a Chippendale, so it's yeah. natural to do that, yes. That's right, I was getting into character. I broke a tooth, I was eating lentils. <laughs> yes, that's right, there's like a... How did a lentil break your tooth? Well, okay, so you know lentils are very soft, but every now and then you get like an uncooked lentil. Have oh. you had that? And it's like, you know what? I'm gonna like, it's my time to shine, baby. You know, like, you I'm gonna lentil. avenge my fallen brethren. <laughs> Where, like lentils are either like the softest substance in the universe or there's like a piece of a meteor in it. Okay, all right. And it like shattered <laughs> my tooth and I could like feel it in my brain. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, as soon as it happened and I looked and it was broken and I went to the dentist, had to do six procedures to get it fixed. Here's my, I should tell you this before we get into I didn't go for 15 years to the dentist at all. Wow. I did not go. And then one day I was just walking on the street and I walked by a dentist's office and I was like, oh, you know what I haven't done in a while? I should just, I just walk in and see what's going on in there, you know? So I just walk in and I'm like, um, it's just a regular dental checkup. And she looks in my mouth and she goes, clear my calendar. <laughs> She, I knew it was going to be bad because she was like, do you have any symptoms? And I said, if I eat ice cream on the left side of my mouth, my spine hurts. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. No. Yeah. And I see the spinning house from Wizard of Oz. <laughs> That's bad, right? Yeah, that's yeah. generally bad. And the yeah. entire soundtrack of Kill Bill plays really fast <laughs> in my head. I had two teeth, Jimmy. I had two teeth I, I, that, that hurt for years. Every day, morning and night, they hurt for years. And then one day, they just stopped hurting. Which is sort of like when the check engine light in your car, after months of it being on, when it just goes off, you know? Where it's like, you know what? Don't worry about it anymore. <laughs> Too late. So the, just the nerve endings died, and then you kept going. Yeah, I, I, I won. I powered through it. When you were a kid, did you go to the dentist? No. No, I, no. No, I didn't go to the dentist. Your parents didn't take you to the dentist. My mom is a little bit of an anti-dentite. She is. Because when I... That's a thing? Well, I mean, she is, yeah. So it is a thing. She, you know, I called her to tell her, like, hey, I've, I've had... I went to the dentist, and he said, she, 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 she up in there. <laughs> and she was like, why did you go to the dentist? I'm like, that's not the right response to that, <laughs> you know? Um, so I went, went to the dentist, oh. and uh, he's really good. I have a great dentist. Oh. And he, like, was fixing my stuff up. And then he looked at me and he was like, do you like your smile? And I said, yeah. And he said, huh. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the wall, as I'm sitting there, there's a huge picture of this gorgeous woman with a perfect smile. It's like a beautiful woman, huge, like head as big as this. And he's like, huh, because that is a good smile. <laughs> and I said, yeah, that is a good smile. And then he like finishes working up and he's like, okay, I'm gonna go and someone's gonna come and clean your teeth. And then he's like, actually, it's her. <laughs> what? And then he leaves and 30 seconds later, that woman walks in. I was like, it was like meeting a celebrity. Wow. <laughs> and it's like a huge picture of her and then she like comes right in front with the same <laughs> smile. What a weird thing. Yeah, and I'm watching, I'm looking at like a massive version of her head as the normal version of her head is inside my mouth. <laughs> it's 
very Hollywood. Yeah. Are you sure they didn't give you some drugs and you imagine you saw that? No, man, it yeah. was her. Yeah. It was her just like smiling like that. And she comes in and she's like, it was like this and then another face just like that. Like, hi, I'm gonna be cleaning your teeth. Well, That's your amazing. teeth look great. Kamel Najani is here with us. His signature is welcome to Chippendales. We'll be right back. You should have two. One that holds exactly enough for a 12-ounce glass, then a second one for your 16-ounce drinks. Like, like a jigger, but for ice. That way your bartender doesn't have to fuss around with multiple scoopers trying to get the exact right amount for a certain glass. It's just one and done, which, which you need in a high volume situation where you want maximum efficiency. I know it sounds crazy, but it would make a big difference. Ballpark, this one change would boost your annual bottom line somewhere on the low to mid six figures. I'm an accountant. We could use an account. That is Kamel Najani, and welcome to Chippendales, which premieres Tuesday on Hulu. Who's the, uh, who's the actress in that scene with you? Her name is Annalie Ashford. She's like a Broadway legend. She's won a Tony, been nominated many times. And uh, she's, you know, uh, she plays Irene on the show. She ends up, we end up getting married. And she's like truly one of the best actors I have ever She seems with. great, yeah. She's so good, man. She's so good. Like, watch her in this and she's going to be huge. She's just so good. Huge in a cheesecake kind of way, or huge That's, in a... When I say huge, I just refer to you cheesecake. You cheesecake, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we said earlier that um, uh, you play the guy who, f who founded Chippendales, who came up with the whole idea. Yeah. This is a crazy story. It's a wild story, you know? And uh, so, so that scene, by the way, that's sort of like a scene of seduction. I know it's weird, but we're, we're both like math, math nerds, mm -hmm. and that's how we sort of get aroused is by talking about numbers. So that's sort of our courtship is just being like, ooh, 20%, okay. <laughs> really exciting. The real, so the guy who created Chippendales, I didn't know this, was this Indian immigrant named Steve Banerjee, came up with this idea. He was like, naked men, dollar bills, that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> but people don't know, the, the story behind it is wild. Like, there's like murders happened the yeah. first 10 years behind the scenes. He was setting fire to, other people were sort of stealing his idea and doing male strip clubs. He was setting fire to those strip clubs and, and uh, ended up hiring people to murder. Like, it's a wild, true story. It all really happened and people don't know it. And so it's an eight, eight episode se series that goes into all the stuff that happened. Yeah, and it seems like the perfect show for families to watch together on Thanksgiving, you know? <laughs> yeah, grandmother wants to feel alive again, right? <laughs> <laughs> Flop her in front of the TV. Will your family watch it? I, I think, I, I've told them not to. You they, have? Yes. They don't listen to me. I see, okay. So they do watch it. There's one movie I did a while ago where I'm like almost completely naked. Uh -huh. And my dad called me and he was like, we are very disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, it's your fault for watching it, dad. I told you, you want to see your son like that? No, yeah. then don't hit play. Maybe you should have taken me to the dentist every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> Yeah, um, well, you have a, is there like, in, I know you were originally from Pakistan, is there a Thanksgiving celebration, uh, a holiday similar to ours there? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, we don't do Thanksgiving over there, because right. it's like specifically, you know, our relationship North American, yeah. with Indians is different than. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have this, we have a holiday, it's called Eid, and you sort of go and you visit all your relatives. So we'd have like 12 houses we'd visit, and everybody would have a bunch of food. 12 different houses? 12 different houses. You go like house to house, staying everywhere, you know, like 15, 15 minutes at a time, and you sort of knew which aunts and uncles had the good food, so you'd pace yourself. Except my brother, he would just start devouring. And you knew it was like time to, like by around like house eight, his color would start changing. <laughs> by house nine, he's like, and he would like still, for, I would see him being like, Whoa. But like still putting food in his mouth. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Your entire body's telling you to stop. He's like, I'm fine, I'm fine. Just like, and then he would throw up every year. He would. He would throw up every year. 
and we called him. Apparently, I was told that if you give a food an unlimited amount, uh, if you give a horse an unlimited amount of food, it just eats until it throws up. So his nickname was Horse for many years. <laughs> really? Horse Nanjiani. Well, I mean, it makes perfect sense that he eventually went to America. I mean, that's a very American thing to be doing, yeah. eating until you vomit. And now he's a banker, so <laughs> good luck with that. It's great to see you. The uh, see show you, is man. called Welcome to Chippendales. It premieres Tuesday on Hulu. Camille Nanjiani, everybody. Thank you, Camille.